Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and on this channel, we talk about all the houseplant things. And today we are doing something very fun. We're just going to be doing some repotting while I answer some questions and just hang out. And I'm very excited to let you know that this video is sponsored by Cozy Earth and I'm really excited to talk about them later. I'm currently wearing a Cozy Earth set and loving every second of it. <laughs> so these are some new plants that I got in Indianapolis, which you have probably seen that video where I showed you these new plants. And then I have a Hoya that I purchased previously that I'm going to be repotting together. Um, this is a fishtail Hoya, if you didn't know, and I have another fishtail Hoya that I've had for a long time, so I'm just going to pot them together in this pot for my wall. So yeah, this, the grand reveal for the wall happened. I hope that you um, were excited for that and loved that video. It was a lot of time and effort, but it was very fun. So I'm really glad that it's number one, over <laughs> but number two i'm really proud of myself because i overcame a lot of things that i was nervous about in that video so anyway point is let's get started i'm just going to pull up the questions this isn't really going to be like a q a repotting necessarily i'm just going to like pull questions from an instagram thing that i put up the other day so that i can just have some direction in my conversation the first question is just like a general weather assessment so it is currently like three degrees outside right now and i'm horrified by that fact like the fact that the weather can get that low is absolutely insane to me so i would love for you guys to comment down below like what the high and the low is for you today um, because I am just so shocked. <laughs> Every single time I look at the forecast and I see a three, I'm like, oh, excuse me, or like a one. It was real feel negative 11 today, which is so insane. Um, I am a little bit more used to it now than I was like last year. Like last year, it was a huge shock. But yeah, it's crazy. I am, of course, going to be using De La Tanks. I always repot with De La Tanks. Like anytime I get a new plant, I'll pot it in De La Tanks. And um, I'd say like 90% of my collection is in De La Tanks at this point. I didn't do like a big switch where I put everything over in it. Like when I got the product from Tanks, like the final product, because I didn't want to like freak out my plants by changing their soil for no reason. So I just kind of waited until I needed to. But this plant is like latching on to everything as I move it. Okay, so we've got a cute little root system on this Hoya. I'm not gonna have to do like much changes or anything. I thought that this was, well, what did I call this plant? I did like a little plant haul on TikTok the other day um, saying what this plant was. And I think I called it a Hoya lacunosa, really not even thinking about what kind of Hoya it was, but somebody told me the ID that they thought it was and I'll have that on the screen. <laughs> Cause I honestly don't know what kind of Hoya this is, but I was like, it's pretty. It's got some like nice pink coloring and I like it. So I guess the ID doesn't really matter to me too much. I don't know. Are you a person who like really cares about plant ID or are you just kind of like, whatever? Let me know. <laughs> also, I should say that the background for this video is like the completed new background, but it's not done at this point that I'm filming. So my videos are kind of um, going out of order. So you're kind of seeing it in the middle of things. Like I still have to put all the plants like on planks and everything else, but there was enough soil so I didn't have to top fill it or anything, but I did put some at the bottom. So the plant will definitely get some new nutrients. And it's already hanging, which is like spectacular. That's why I picked this one in particular because it was already hanging and it's really thirsty. So I need to get it some water right when I'm done repotting today. This next one is a Deschidia, watermelon Deschidia, and it was really making its way crawling up this little wire here. So I'm just gonna remove, like I did with the other one, just one side and just... Okay, this one is more of a comment. It says, I'm tired of my plants. I feel bad letting them die slash ignore them. I feel you and I have been there. So if you are feeling similar to this person who wrote in. I just want you to know that that's valid and you're not alone because there's definitely going to be phases of liking and not liking or like being really into and being really not into your plants. It's a very normal part of like life. I think it would be weird if we were like 
constantly 100%, whoop, always all in on everything. I mean, my brain doesn't work like that. Maybe it's not weird, but my brain just doesn't work like that. Ooh, the soil looks pretty nice, honestly. I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> um, but yeah, my brain does not work where I'm just like always into all of my hobbies at the same time. Um, somebody also asked in that Q&A and I answered it on Instagram, but I can talk about it here too. But somebody asked me like how I keep all of my hobbies straight because you guys know I have a lot of hobbies. So like how do I manage all of them? Oh shoot, I was gonna pot this in with it. It never grows like new leaves. It only ever flowers. And I'm like, man, can we get some leaves? <laughs> I've had it for so long and it has not done any like leaf growth and from the looks of it It hasn't done any root growth either like that root system is so little I have a feeling that this plant is not gonna adjust very well to this new environment. I just have a feeling But we'll see if you're new I like plants Clearly, I, oh, this entire thing just fell out. Um, sorry, I like plants, I do sewing, I make my own clothes, I do knit, crochet, like, you know, stuff like that. I have so many different things that I do and enjoy. And I really just base what I'm gonna do that day off of my feelings. <laughs> like, am I feeling like being a houseplant person today? Am I feeling like being a sewing person today? And I can be multiple things in one day, but the point is I just kind of decide if I feel like doing one thing or another that day and just kind of go with that because some days I do it all in one day, but most days it's like, or most weeks, it's like all plants or all sewing or all crochet and knitting and stuff. Do you guys love that each of my dogs are like laying on these chairs? I think they missed the chairs more than I did, honestly. Okay, this question is, are you a vegetarian? I, oops, dropped my phone. I'm not a vegetarian, but I do eat plant-based a lot of the time. My husband is not anywhere near wanting to be plant-based, so that does make it a little bit more difficult, like when the person that you eat with isn't interested in doing that. Um, it's not to say that that like completely holds me back, but I do have issues with like iron levels and I do take supplements, but it is still helpful for me to eat meat from time to time to like keep up with that kind of stuff. I don't eat meat all the time, like maybe once a week, sometimes twice a week if I'm feeling extra weak. But honestly, especially since I started ordering from Green Chef, I have been eating plant-based so much more just because the recipes make it really easy, like when all the ingredients are sent to you. So if you're wanting to make like any sort of diet change like that, I would really suggest tr like checking something out like Green Chef because all the recipes are curated for you so you don't have to worry about trying to figure them out because I feel like with diet changes, it can be hard just to find good recipes that are gonna be like filling and worthwhile. And I've had really good luck with the Green Chef uh, vegan and vegetarian meals. Most of the time they're vegan. So yeah, I really love it. I think it's a really great way to practice um, a new diet. And I really like eating plant-based. It makes me feel really good. Oh, my battery looks like it's gonna die. But here's this one. I'm gonna go switch out my battery. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And while we're on a little break, I wanna talk to you a little bit about Cozy Earth. So Cozy Earth is a premium bedding and loungewear company that creates their bedding and loungewear with premium weave technology that prevents pilling and regulates your body temperature. All of their products are certified free of harsh chemicals and dyes, and they're made from super, super soft viscose, which is made from highly sustainable bamboo. I'm a person who really cares about sustainability in clothing and the garment industry in general, which is why I'm just so excited to work with a company like Cozy Earth who understands this and makes their items from sustainable materials like bamboo. If you're not familiar with fabric and the different fibers that make up different types of fabric, viscose is a fabric that is made from semi-synthetic materials on the regular, but Cozy Earth uses a viscose that is actually made from bamboo. So it's completely natural while achieving the same feel. Actually, probably even a better feel because this is actually breathable. Viscose and other synthetic fibers tend to not be very breathable and sort of like hold in all of your sweat and oils. And this one definitely doesn't, which is why it's really comfortable comfortable to sleep in and work out in. I actually have been wearing this outfit, like these pants especially, for um, let's say two weeks. 
<laughs> I did pop them in the washer and after they came out of the washer, they were even softer and they smelled good and they were just amazing. I've worn them to work out and it was amazing. Like I did not feel at all like there was sweat pooling in my body like I have felt with other like workout type materials. And I don't know if anybody else is like me, but I tend to be a hot sleeper at the beginning of the night and then as the night goes on, I get colder and colder. But I did a little experiment and I slept in this. I never woke up hot or cold, which I think is a big win for me personally. And honestly, is a true testament to the fact that this fabric is warm yet breathable, even more breathable than cotton. So if you're looking for some loungewear that will take you all through the night and all your different temperatures, <laughs> make sure that you check out Cozy Earth by clicking the link down in the description box below so they know that I sent you. And that website is www.cozyearth.com slash plants. And if you use my code Adela Plans, that will get you 40% off your purchase. Definitely take advantage of that one. You will not regret it. I love this set. Um, I just think it's the most comfortable thing in the world. So I can only imagine how luxurious and wonderful their sheets are too. All right, let's get back into repotting. I have a few other things to repot. Okay, it is time to repot this Mikan's in here. And you know what? I was thinking that I wanted to put my Mikan's, uh, I have two Mikan's now that I have this one, and I was thinking that I wanted to pot them together, but I have my other one sitting in a pot up there in a plant hanger, and I kind of like the way it looks, so I don't know. <sighs> I don't know if I wanna do that. I might want to just have them be separate, but I think it actually just depends on what the root system for this one looks like because if it's like a big root system, then I'm not even gonna be able to pot them together, which this feels pretty, feels pretty intense. Oh, yeah, 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 there's lots of, lots of roots in here, but honestly, this feels like a lot of peat moss and like not a ton of plant, so I might be able to pot them together, actually. I mean, there's definitely like a solid root system. I'm removing quite a bit here because if the soil is like very, very different in texture from the De La Tank soil, I tend to remove more of it than usual because I don't want the plant to like have an uneven moisture situation in the pot. So yeah, I like to remove it if it's like really, really dense, which peat moss, like only peat moss tends to be pretty dense. I think I'm gonna pot them together because this one is just like not that impressive on its own. Favorite plants at the moment. I think like, my hanging plants, just those classic hanging plants is really what I'm into right now. Like, uh, I don't know. I think I'm really liking Hoya right now, actually, which is funny because I went through a really big Hoya stage like pretty early on in my plant uh, journey, parenthood. And then I kind of got off of Hoya. I still have them and like, of course I enjoyed them, but my craze for Hoya definitely died out. And I don't know what craze I gained after that. I don't know if I really gained a craze. <laughs> but um, in general, oh yeah, this one needed to be repotted actually. These roots were kind of curling around the bottom. So I guess it works out. I really am enjoying that right now and just like seeing them grow and change. Um, my Hoya Compacta, I think in the podcast, somebody asked us like, oh God, this does not look good potted together. <laughs> Does that, that does not look good potted together like at all. Oh, I hate that. Okay, that's not gonna happen. I hate it. Cause these leaves are so big and then those leaves are like so scraggly. It looks terrible. I'm gonna have to figure something else out. Like I think I'm gonna have to pot this in like a little pot or yeah, a littler pot with a lip. Cause this is a little pot, but it'll have to have a lip on it so that it can like hang on the wall because I definitely want it to be a wall plant but that's not gonna work. <laughs> that looked really bad. <laughs> Sometimes giving your plants extensions is not the move. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I've been really into my Hoya Compacta. Just like trailing Hoya, like my Hoya Linearis is really beautiful. Like, okay, here's something I noticed. Sometimes I will just forget a plant exists. Like I'll know it exists obviously because I'm watering it but I just kind of forget how awesome it is. And my Hoya Linearis is a freaking boss. Like she is so cool. It's so long and beautiful and full. And I'm just so excited that I got that like so many years ago. I bought that 
when I was still living in Tucson, I ordered it online. And I was like, should I do it? Ugh. And then I did it and I'm really happy that I did. This plant really needs water. So we're gonna be doing a big watering sesh after this is done. But there she is in her new little pot and this is gonna go up on the plant wall in the medium plant section because I have like a, ouch, I have like a medium, small, medium, small. I don't know how I'm actually gonna do it all. But um, yeah, this is not gonna work. I think I need to, well, obviously I need to put soil in it so that it doesn't die. Maybe a pop of nutrients will help this to not grow so scraggly. I honestly don't know the last time I fertilized this plant. Um, I'm not very good at remembering what plants I have fertilized. And of course it's not fertilizing season right now, so it doesn't matter like all that much. Yeah, oh, speaking of like seasons, sometimes I'll get questions when I post like a repotting video or I like say that I repotted something in the winter. I'll get questions from people being like, I thought you weren't supposed to repot in the winter time. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's like typical advice not to, but I've never not repotted in the winter for fear of my plant having a negative reaction and we've been fine, you know, like, I've never had a plant suffer because I repotted it in the winter. Um, they're typically just happy to have more space to live in. So I think it's fine. I think we'll be okay. I think it's, a, it's not necessarily a misconception, but I think that it's just made out to be a little bit more rigid of a rule than it is or it should be. My soil mound is getting very big. Ooh, look at those roots. That's beautiful. I love opening up a vining plant and seeing an actual root system because like with that Dachidia ovata, it was just a bunch of cuttings, like plugs, literal plugs, just potted in a pot together, which is fine, but it's gonna be a while before that plant has like a cohesive root system together because it's still growing its own root system. like. I don't know, I just find that it, those plants just take a little bit longer to like get big and really grow because they're so focused on not being a baby plant that they don't really, like growing their roots, I mean, but they don't really focus on putting out leaves. But this is another really beautiful and healthy root system. Very cohesive, I love it. And this one again has like a, just a ton of peat moss. So I'm just, this is just like a big pile of peat moss. So I'm just gonna dump that. And here we go. This pot is perfect. I think that it'll grow into this pot pretty well. Probably need to be repotted in like a year, but that's okay. Typically, I don't know. Some people say repot your plants every year, but I think I get away with every two years, depending on the plant. But I do tend to pot my plants a little bit tight in their pots because I don't want them to get any sort of like extra opportunities to rot. So I don't typically give them like a ton of extra soil. So if you experience a lot of rot with your plants, maybe that's why you're giving them too much room in their pots. But typically you only wanna go up like two sizes every time you repot like two inches. But sometimes if the plant came in a nursery pot, you might not actually need to upgrade the size that much. So it just really depends on the size of that root system. But anyway, she's all done. She's going to definitely need water as well. And honestly, I think that's all. I repotted one, two, three, four, five, six plants. That is definitely more than I was expecting. So hope that you enjoyed a little repotting sesh. I know that I did. I love hanging out with you guys and repotting. It's just so much fun to have someone to do this with because typically I would be staring at the wall doing this by myself, which is fun sometimes, but it's definitely nice to have someone to chat with, even if I am literally just like talking to myself in a room full of plants. Honestly, that brings me some perspective. <laughs> Um, okay, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Cozy Earth. Use code DayLaPlants for 40% off your order and use the link down below so they know that I sent you. I'm super excited to see what you guys get from Cozy Earth and I'm excited to place another order because this is awesome. And they've got more loungewear stuff than just this. So, all right, I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.